Thank you so much for um, joining us today to talk about a new way to move innovation from the research lab to the patient's bedside. One of the things that we have seen over the last 20 years of building Arizona's bioscience industry is that there's amazing work being done all across our state. But if we don't figure out how to turn what's discovered in a research lab into viable products and services that can actually help people, then it's all an academic exercise. So today we're going to talk about one way, based on research that was done over a three-year best practices study, of solving that problem. So you heard me say that we've been building the biosciences for the over 20 years here in Arizona. And that includes, as you see on this slide, um, you know, establishing a bioscience cl cluster, bringing in the Translational Genomics Research Institute, or TGEN, which became a catalyst that really built and attracted some top globally recognized talent. On top of that, the people of Arizona, um, through the legislature, invested $500 million early in 2003 to build up our research institutes at our universities. And those research institutes today are pumping out world-class science and during the COVID pandemic pivoted and became a key resource for testing and research so that we could keep our community safe. Our hospitals also are just amazing. Honor Health and the Honor Health Research Institute has, is the home to Dr. Daniel Von Hoff, one of the leading experts in the whole world on pancreas cancer. The University of Arizona Cancer Center, both in Tucson and Phoenix, is constantly working on new solutions. Interestingly, and not surprisingly, one of their real, small, real strong points is skin cancer because nobody has more sunshine than we do. Um, Banner University Medicine is affiliated with the University of Arizona and is helping to train the next generation of doctors. Mayo Clinic is continually expanding in the state of Arizona. And the new Mayo Med School is um, now training physicians right here in our state. And then we look at the acquisitions going back to when Medtronic first launched um, and acquired a company in Arizona. Um, IMS Health has acquired multiple companies in Arizona. MERS acquired Ulthera, um, really an interesting company. They make a non-invasive facelift and others. So as we move forward, we want to have more of those successes. We want to see more of those companies that are created here, grow here, and stay here. And that's one of the things that we're working on right now. So you heard me say that over $22 billion have been invested. That's in the university research structures. That's in our um, university research funding. It includes the work at the hospitals and the amazing expansion of our hospital systems in Arizona. Over the 20 years, our hospital beds, our capacity to treat people has doubled. But what we see is that of that $22 billion, about 80% of it has been invested in research and healthcare infrastructure. So on each side of that, that spectrum, from discovery to de development to delivery, only about 20% has actually gone into these young companies that are going to actually take that research and move it forward. That's the gap we have to address. And when we do, it's going to have a major impact on our state today and for generations to come. So when we talk about the case for capital, it is the opportunity not just to develop cures, but to also grow Arizona's economy. As you saw on the prior slide, over $32 billion was the economic impact of Arizona's bioscience industry in 2018 alone. That's on a $22 billion investment over 20 years. That's great ROI. So when we talk about building this solution, it's a solution for health,
but it's also a solution to create a healthier economy. As we look at the opportunity, we want to leverage those decades of investment into building it to have high impact potential. And the way we do that is through AZ Advances. AZ Advances is obviously focused on advancing life science innovation and life science companies in Arizona. The process will involve identifying high potential, high yield new discoveries that come out of entrepreneurs, research labs, hospitals, wherever good ideas are found. To help them through the proof of concept phase and provide early stage funding so that they can start de-risking these opportunities. Once they've done that, then those companies are ready to attract additional investment into the company and into the state so that together we grow. So on this slide, and we don't have time to go over all of these opportunities, but what I have provided you is just a, a little cross-section of some of the really cool things that are happening in Arizona right now. Did you know that many of the cancers that take our loved ones, if we catch them early, can be, can be treated and addressed and lives can be saved? We need better early detection for a wide range of cancers. And Arizona companies are working on that right now. They're also working on drugs and biologics to improve outcomes for patients when they have horrible diseases. One of them, a company called Calviri, is even working on a vaccine to prevent cancer altogether. Can you imagine a day where cancer is something that people just talk about the way today we talk about polio as something that happened in history? So whether it's cardiopulmonary disease, heart disease being the number one killer in most years in the United States, or some of those keep you up at night diseases like Alzheimer's disease or dementia or ALS, these are all opportunities that are being worked on by Arizona companies right now. And we want to find the best opportunities and give them the best opportunity for success. The challenge is these high op opportunities um, progress too slowly. And many of them never leave the launch pad due to a lack of early stage funding. Again, early stage life science companies are very risky. So we're working on a solution that helps to take some of that investment risk away and at the same time help these companies mature so that they can then be de-risked, so they attract outside investment in the future. Today, as we looked across a best practices study with the help of a family office in New York, um, we were able to talk with and look at models all across the United States. We looked at incubators, accelerators, foundations, and government programs to try and figure out what is the best model to solve this problem. And then we took the, uh, the best pieces of all of their models and then went through the process with the lawyers and the regulatory people to make sure it can be done to build a new solution, an Arizona-based solution that will advance Arizona life science in the future. That's called AZ Advances. It is an endowment-based model that will provide a steady stream of early stage funding um, that will stand the test of time. One of the big things we found in our best practices modeling is that many solutions are you put money in and then you deploy it all out. That's very often what happens with grant-based funding like you see at the National Institutes of Health or many private foundations. So the pot is constantly going dry and you're constantly going back to the well and to your donors and your philanthropists and saying, we need more money, we need more money. The goal of AZ Advances is to build an endowment that will then generate early stage capital in this state forever. And more importantly, as we go through that process, 
um, the equity that's held in these early stage companies, because we will take equity, not give grants, will be held in the endowment. So when one of these companies succeeds, the endowment gets bigger and there are more funds to deploy from the distribution each year. That way, the AZ Advances Endowment and the AZ Advances Today Fund, which will deploy those investments, will grow with the industry and the community. This is a fully sustainable model to solve a problem that has not been solved before. So how is it structured? AZ Advances is structured as a 501c3 public charity. We will do some small grants for proof of concept feasibility studies um, for academic researchers who aren't in companies yet. They've discovered something and they have to figure out if it's ready for prime time. So those will be small research grants. The primary focus is mission-related investments. So those mission-related investments that are made from the 5% distribution from the endowment each year goes into the companies. This has a really important difference. With a grant, you often have responsibility to go back to your grantor and provide certain information over the course of the life of the grant. As an investor, we are going to be working with these companies on an ongoing basis, just as traditional venture capitalists do. And so we can help those companies, we can monitor those companies, and we can measure those companies, not just through a grant period, but through the life of the company. The goal is to span our funding gap and create more investable companies here in Arizona so that they can grow and attract investment, create jobs, and deliver cures. So as I said, this is a homegrown solution. Um, we have received from the EDA, that's the Economic Development Agency, which is part of the U.S. Department of Commerce. They provided us with a $300,000 seed fund support grant, which is being matched by over a $500,000 investment by AZ Bio. Um, to develop this model, to stand up the program, and make sure that it is well-structured, well-managed, and most importantly, will meet the mission of supporting life science innovation and driving cures, not just today, but for generations in the future. We have a team of both volunteer and staff who can work with these companies to help de-risk the discoveries, help them understand the marketability of what they've discovered, but more importantly, take them through the very complex process of developing a product from the lab and all the way through the regulatory processes until it gets to the patient and what's called post-marketing afterwards where you continue to track the impact of that. That's something that many of us had never heard of before COVID. But COVID vaccines are a really good example. Right now, they've been developed rapidly. They're being deployed under an emergency use authorization or an EUA. But the studies of how they're impacting people, how efficacious they are, and you know, what the advantages and disadvantages of various products are over time, as well as how safe they are is going to be monitored for years to come. Being able to explain that process to our early stage companies is very, very important because we want them to be successful and we want them to stand the, the, the test of time also. In addition, because we are working with and hopefully developing companies that will be good investment opportunities in the future, um, there will be opportunities over time for people who want to go beyond philanthropy and actually invest in these companies to co-invest with us. So basically, invest side by side. So we'll do the research, we'll do the due diligence, we'll do the hand-holding, but AZ Advances is designed not just to invest as a single investor, but to be a syndication engine to bring in other investors, whether they're investors in Arizona or investors from around the world. And 
one of the nice things is that as a donor to the AZ Advances Endowment, we're 501c3. You may be eligible for a tax benefit today, and that's something you need to talk to your financial advisors and your tax people about. But um, we are a 501c3 public charity, and we would very much appreciate your support. The other thing that's really important is we are filling a gap. We are not reinventing the wheel and we are not competing with what's already been built in Arizona. We're synergistically supporting everything that's already here, including our investor groups, ATI and Desert Angels, um, the Arizona Innovation Challenge, which distributes $3 million a year to early stage companies in the life sciences as well as in other technologies. Um, it builds on the angel investor tax credit, the R&D tax credit, and other incentives that are available in our state. In addition, it builds on the ecosystem, AZ Bio, where I serve as president and CEO, which is there to support these companies and provide them with cost-saving programs, with mentoring, support, and a way to connect with each other so that they can collaborate. We are plugged in with all of the incubators and accelerators, the university tech transfer offices, our university infrastructure process, and the growing talent base in the state. We also um, will work very closely with students, providing internships and opportunities for them to learn more so that as these companies grow, they can have jobs right here at home. And quite frankly, as a mom who's seen her kids move out of state for good job opportunities, I want more good, high-quality job opportunities here in this state so grandmas don't have to travel to see their grandkids. So just, you know, as we look at this, I want to really focus on the innovation journey, okay? Discovery is where the research is. That's at our labs and our universities, places like TGen and the Barrow and the Banner Alzheimer's Institute and Honor Health Research and Phoenix Children's and all of the amazing places where research is done in Arizona. Development happens at the companies. We need more companies to develop that research into viable products and services so that our first-class, world-class healthcare professionals can make it better for patients. Because at the end, it's not an innovation until it's actually making life better. And AZ Advances is going to advance research to become innovations that help people. This is also um, a catalyst for growth. So here in Arizona, we don't have a large scale venture capitalist who can be a partner with institutional capital from around the world. So one very important part of the AZ Advances model is we will now be that large scale institutional investor that they can work with and feel more comfortable that when they invest in Arizona, they have a partner that is working with them. It will allow Arizona to attract high-grade talent from other parts of the country and other parts of the world. Because people do not move to go work for a company that can't afford to pay them. Many of these little companies can't afford to hire high-class talent. But if they're getting funding through AZ Advances and through our syndication partners, they can attract the talent they need to succeed. We'll be working with them to make hard decisions, and look at their risks with an ultimate goal of rooting those companies in Arizona so they stay here and grow here. Our toolbox includes um, TRIF, the Technology Research Initiative Fund. That's, what, that's funded by the 0.6 sales tax that we all pay every time we buy something in Arizona. Um, Arizona also has, of course, the Arizona Commerce Authority and the Flynn Foundation, who we work very closely with. Our angels and angel tax credits encourage investors as we de-risk these companies. And obviously, the funds that will be coming from AZ Advances will help drive that process. And we'll constantly work with our incubators and accelerators, programs like Venture Ready, and um, investor conferences and groups like White Hat and Invest Southwest, which are bringing other investors here to Arizona 
to see the companies that we're going to be helping to develop. We also will be working very closely with our um, international con um, and national relationships at places like the J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference um, in the Southwest, 10 West down in Tucson, the Bio-International Convention, the White Hat Life Science Conference, which is right here, held right here in Arizona. You know, one interesting side note, AZ Bio actually started White Hat in 2014, and we do it every two years. Since um, we started in 2014, and we've had 32 companies present every year, those companies have gone on to raise $1.2 billion. And so we know that the programs that we're developing and the companies that we're helping have the capacity to grow if we can get them to the stage where they're ready for outside investment. And that's what AZ Advances is going to do. I also want to do a shout out to Arizona's Bioscience Roadmap Steering Committee and the Flynn Foundation who have over the last 20 years tracked the growth of jobs and opportunities in our bioscience sector. This slide is from the Flynn Foundation presentation um, that was done in 2020. It uses 2018 data because that was the last available data. Um, but you can see how the biosciences has outpaced private sector growth in this space. And we have the ability to grow that exponentially from here by funding these early stage companies so that they grow here in Arizona. So what's the next step? Where do we go from here? Um, we are currently building out our implementation teams, um, talking to key lead donors like you, establishing partnerships, um, dipping our toe in the water for crowdfunding because we are a public charity, so we have to follow the public charity rule and have at least a third of our fundraising raising from smaller donors and from government support. Um, and we're looking forward to appointing additional AZ Advances trustees. I actually serve as a trustee of AZ Advances, as does Russ Yelton, who is very well known in the entrepreneurial community. We also had a number of advisors who have offered to serve as trustees, but we decided instead of saying it's a fait accompli, give us your money and we'll tell you what we did with it, we want you to be a co-developer with us. So our major donors will have the opportunity to work with us on selection of additional trustees so that the mission and the value of this organization is provided not just now, but for many generations to come. Who are some of the people that we're talking to? We're talking to family offices, community members, university foundations, economic development agencies at the city, state, and county level, and also industry partners. We hope that as we go forward, you may know some of the people who can help with this very important initiative, and any guidance that you can provide is greatly appreciated. So thank you. I really appreciate your time. I hope that this provided um, a quick overview of what we're trying to do with AZ Advances. And I look forward to talking to each of you individually um, today or in the future so that we can figure out how we can make Arizona better for companies, for jobs, and most importantly, for patients.